Hi, I'm Charlotte with Freezer Meals 101. I'm Christy. Welcome. Today we are making more vegetarian freezer meals. Yes. There's great things about vegetarian meals. A, these are the most flavorful vegetarian meals oh, that amazing. we could have picked for you. And do you know what? They're pretty easy on the pocketbook too. Definitely. Meatless meals are a great way to go if you are looking to cut your grocery costs. Mm -hmm. We actually just filmed a video a few weeks ago, I'm going to put the link right there, of frugal freezer meals. And those ones actually all had meat in them, but did they all? Yes, yeah, all of them had meat in mm -hmm. them, but... Mm -mm. The beans. Pork. There was pork in yes. it, you're right. So, uh, but if you're looking for ways to save money, that video has become really popular yeah, because has, everyone is looking for ways to save money. It's groceries. a crunch on everybody's wallet, so everybody needs to, you know, buckle down and really look at what you're spending at the grocery store. And two of the recipes that we're doing today are ones that I actually thought of for that video but I wanted to just stick with using meat recipes so that we didn't get people saying like, well, of course they're budget, they're meatless. But, <laughs> right. but here we can kind of combine meatless and vegetarian. Now, these are healthy. We can combine frugal and vegetarian. Oh, yes, that's... <laughs> meatless is vegetarian. Yes, uh, yeah, that's okay. It's been, it's been a long day. <laughs> anyway, it has been, um, okay. Uh, so, and I'm a little tired. We're, I have a new grind baby. So he does. Um, he's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. We've been pretty smitten all day. He's here because our daughter is staying with us for a, a bit, a week and a half, while her husband's out of town, and he, the baby's only ten days old. So of course she's of course she's here. She's staying here, but um, we are we're tired. <laughs> She's tired. So, I'm getting more sleep than she is. That's it's all true. good. That's it's true. all good. I have no excuses. So what are we making today? Okay, we are making cauliflower lentil curry. Oh, it's spicy and so delicious. And the lentils in it, I wasn't a believer. But now I'm a believer. They're and good. They're, it's filling. I was yeah. worried. I looked at this and I'm like, nobody's going to be, who's full after eating soup? This one, you are. It's um, it's substantial. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like a stew. It's like stew -ish. It's really thick. It's thick. Yeah. Oh, is it good. And packed full of flavor. It's so yes. good. Yes. And the curried butternut squash soup has long been my favorite soup. It's just... And who... I mean, we love a butternut squash. To add the bit of curry into it. Just and sweet potatoes kicks it up a in notch. there. It oh. is so good. Freezes beautifully. You can make it first and then freeze it. Or you can just... Make it, put it together and freeze it, and then on the day of, make your soup. So yeah. it's like having fresh butternut and squash soup. we're going to show you that way today, mm -hmm. so that it's just fast, it's in your freezer, it's nice and fresh, and then when you take it out, you're going to cook it up and then run an immersion blender through it, and it'll be done. It's so good. So good. Um, and so then we have, wait, things get interesting. <laughs> Because cauliflower lentil curry and curried butter and squash soup weren't interesting enough. <laughs> Things are getting interesting. Uh, sometimes you might think of vegetarian meals and think, oh, it's so bland. It is not. And I'll tell you why. I don't know if you know this. Charla's an adopter. She's got several adopted children and two of them are from Ethiopia. Sorry for my band-aid today. I'm... Yeah, five we, of our kids are adopted. And... and two are from Ethiopia. And... So there is Ethiopian food happening in this house on a semi-regular basis, yeah. and it's delicious. It is full of flavor, so good. and it's healthy, and it's pretty good on the pocketbook too. Yes, so we're making yamisir wat today, which is an Ethiopian lentil stew. This one is made with red lentils. We also do one with yellow split peas. That one is called, oh, I think it's Yakik Alicha. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, let's hope. And then we do shira wat, which is a chickpea Ethiopian stew, but we're not doing those today. Um, we are just doing yamisir wat today, which is the red lentil one, and one of our daughter's favorites. Yes, and then we're going to keep up our ethnic uh, tour, world <laughs> tour, yes. can we say. And we're going to make chana masala, which again, packed full of flavor and so delicious. And easy on the pocketbook again. Easy on the pocketbook and, and easy to make. That's yes. not a hard one at all. We're going to throw this together in no mm -hmm. time at all. 
And then the last one, oh, buckle up folks. It's carrot soup, which sounds as boring as boring gets, <laughs> but, but it is the most exciting soup I've ever eaten. Yeah, you're like, if, if the butternut squash soup is my favorite, this might be yours. Easily my favorite soup. And I made it once in our supper club. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna put a video or a link right up there. It's actually, it's weirdly enough, it's a video about how to make homemade ham or hamburger, hamburger patties. patties. Or not just hamburger, but burger patties. And, but we- We kind of started talking about our supper club. It's pretty awesome and we go, go on, on at length. Tangent. I here. did make this for supper club one time. It's a great fall recipe. It's a great, even, you know, midsummer when your carrots first start to come in, you can do this and, uh, and you want to roast your carrots. So I will tell you the prep has already been done for that. We have already roasted the carrots and so they're a little bit caramelized, a little bit Mmm, the flavor is packed in there. That brings the flavor out. That brings roasting. the flavor out and it is delicious and it's dairy free. There, there's a tablespoon, you can put a blob of butter in it at the end and it's uh, optional. And you also finish with a little bit of lemon juice, which oh, just gives so it good. some zip. Oh yeah. gosh, it's so good. Who would have thought I'd be here gushing over carrot soup? <laughs> Not me. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something really quick. It is good though. I've had it. Like, it's so it's good. It's so good. One of the best pies my mom ever made in her life was carrot pie. Oh, there was weird. something that, it is weird. <laughs> There's something that happened that we either left them too late or we had rain at a weird time on our carrots. And if we had a home garden, like I grew up on a farm and we had the big, huge garden. And my mom did the canning and all, she did all, she did all the things. But these carrots were huge. They were big and long and Honestly, at that once they're that that size, they're a little bit woody. And she thought, I can't chop these and freeze these. What am I gonna do with all these carrots? Well, she stewed them and mashed them like she you would make pumpkin puree. And she pureed these carrots and she made carrot pie and she using the same strange. spices as pumpkin pie. Okay. But she made it like a custard with the eggs and and it was just like eating pumpkin pie, except it was carrot pie. And it was delicious. You wouldn't have even known. Okay, the pumpkin pie spices get me a little bit more on board. If you didn't know that it wasn't, that it was carrot pie, like if nobody had told you, you would think it's pumpkin pie. Throw a little whipped cream on that and it was good. So carrots, we don't give them enough credit. I just realized <laughs> now, going over this list, that these are also all really great fall recipes. They are good fall recipes. The colors, oh, this is gonna be good. Oh, the carotene, beta carotene. <laughs> the eyesight, oh, coming into Christmas, your eyesight's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> okay, so the first one we're gonna do is the red lentil cauliflower curry. We're actually going to cook this one up today in the slow cooker, which we don't normally do, but for this one, we're cooking it up first and then freezing it. That way it'll be all ready to eat on the day of, because it does, does take quite a while to cook in the slow cooker. So we're doing two heads of cauliflower because it's supposed to be one head and we're doubling the recipe. Then some red lentils, onion, garlic, ginger, red curry paste, salt, turmeric, garam masala, cayenne, and tomato puree. Now, you're supposed to use tomato puree and not tomato sauce. We didn't quite have enough tomato puree to double the recipe, so we ended up using mostly tomato puree and a little bit of tomato sauce. Then we're gonna put in some water and coconut milk. You wanna use the full fat coconut milk because it's just better. And when you do that, it's good to kind of whisk it up in a bowl. And now you don't have to do that step, but this just ensures that all, like it, it all creams together and that it just stirs in there really nicely. So that's what we've done for this. We're going to cook that in the slow cooker until the lentils and cauliflower are nice and tender. And then we're going to transfer it into the freezer bags. All you need to do is reheat on the day that you serve it. The next recipe we're gonna do is crock pot chana masala. It's got two cans of chickpeas that have been rinsed and drained, a chopped onion, lots of garlic that's minced, ginger, some Thai chilies, cumin, turmeric, garam masala, and a can of tomato paste. 
We're gonna add a little bit of lemon juice and then a couple of cups of vegetable broth. We're gonna mix this all together and put it in the freezer bag and then we wanna remove all that excess air. The, removing the excess air is really important in freezer meals because that is where you get your freezer burn. So you have to take out as much air as possible and then you can just lay it flat and freeze. On the day that you wanna cook it, you're gonna put it in your slow cooker, cook on low for four to six hours, and then when you go to serve it, you wanna to top it with a little bit of fresh cilantro, and you can serve it with basmati rice or naan. For the curried butternut squash soup, you're gonna cube up a sweet potato and a butternut squash. You're gonna do those in about one inch chunks. Nice and chunky. Then some olive oil, onion, garlic, ginger. We like the squeeze tube ginger because we just find it's like nice and fresh without you having to grate your own. It's kind of a nice mix. Then you're gonna do curry paste. Now here, you can kind of determine your spice level. If you like spicy like we do, then you can do a spicy curry paste. If you like mild, more like Christie's house, then you might do a mild curry paste. Then you're gonna do some cumin, salt, pepper, and vegetable broth. Now for the vegetable broth, you can leave that part out until the day of cooking if you want, because then you end up with a thinner bag and it takes up less space in your freezer. So I often will leave out the vegetable broth and then just write a note on the bag that says to add the vegetable broth later. This recipe, is in our Freezer Meals 101 Club. So in the club, you can find some amazing recipes. And if you happen to be vegetarian, you can filter by that. So you can just click the little vegetarian button and all of the vegetarian meals will filter for you. And you can create your own custom meal plans and print off customized shopping lists. So when you, on the day that you go to cook this, you're just gonna thaw it and then cook it on the stove top. You're gonna add in two cups of water, boil it, simmer it, and then when things are nice and soft, you can just blend it with an immersion blender. If you want to, you can fancy it up and you can top it with a little bit of heavy cream or cilantro, or you can just serve it like this, honestly. It's so flavorful, you don't need anything else. For the Yemisir Wat, this is another one that we're actually cooking it up today and making the full stew. And then on the day that we have this, we can just reheat it. We're gonna do, we're gonna heat some oil on the stove top, add onions, and we're gonna cook that, stir it for about eight minutes. Now this part might seem a little tedious, but again, if you wanna double or triple or quadruple this recipe, you end up with a bunch of meals, you only made them once, and on the day that you go to serve it, you just reheat it. So it's so worth it. Then you're gonna stir in your bear bear, ginger, and garlic. Bear bear is an Ethiopian spice. You, can, you can't honestly find it at your local grocery store. You do have to find uh, an African store or Sometimes in a place like Bulk Barn, they will have those kind of spices. Our local bar Bulk Barn does have Bear Bear, or you can make your own spice blend. I like to get it from an Ethiopian store that's in the city pretty close to where we live, because that way I can buy the injera there, and that is the spongy kind of flat bread. Bread is the wrong word, but it's like that kind of idea. Um, and that's what you eat your wat with traditionally. Now, you can eat it however you want, but it's best with injera. You're gonna stir that for just two minutes and then add your lentils and cook, stirring that for one more minute. Now, I forgot to mention, but for all Ethiopian food, you want to really puree your garlic. And I know that when Christy and I are making freezer meals, we often will use jarred garlic that's already minced. But when it comes to Ethiopian food, you really do need to use fresh and puree it yourself because that's where a lot of the flavors come from. Next, you're gonna add three cups of water and then you're gonna bring this over a boil, reduce the heat once it's boiling, and then you're just gonna simmer. And you can add little bits of water here and there if you find that it's getting too thick or sticking to the bottom of the pot. 
And you just wanna do this until your lentils kind of disintegrate and it's they're nice and soft and it creates a thick stew. So it's about 30 minutes. And then you're gonna season it with salt. Wait for it to cool a bit before you transfer it into your freezer bag. And that's it, another meal is done, even though that one did take longer than, you know, most of ours do. The delicious carrot soup that I was bragging about earlier. <laughs> you're gonna love this one, it's so easy. Uh, you want two pounds of carrots and you're going to put them in the oven at 400 degrees and get them roasted up. You wanna put a little bit of olive oil and salt on there and, and go ahead and let them get crispy. You want them to be in there for about 40 minutes. And then we're going to let them cool and here's where we start our video because we're putting, we did this yesterday and we're putting the carrots in the bag now. We're going to add um, a medium onion, two cloves of garlic, minced or pressed, coriander, cumin, and four cups of vegetable broth or water. In this recipe, it is actually flavorful enough that you can get away with just doing water. But if you wanted to, you could use vegetable broth. We're gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to taste and a little bit of black pepper to, to taste. On the day of cooking, you're going to thaw it and just cook it on the stove top. You're gonna to add a couple more cups of water and then you are going to uh, add salt and pepper to taste. And if you wanted to, you could optionally add one to two tablespoons of unsalted butter. If you wanted to keep it vegan, you can skip the butter. You're going to bring it to a boil and let it cook for about 15 minutes to give those flavors time to meld. And once it's done cooking, you use an immersion blender, or if you're very careful, you can put it into a big blender and um, puree it that way. But you can use your immersion blender and make it smooth, smooth, smooth until it is exactly where you want it. And it is delicious. This is like one of those restaurant soups. It's like a restaurant soup and it's so simple, like it's, Really? It's carrots and it's onions. It's carrots and onions. And some seasonings. Uh, there's no bay leaf in here, which I think is a little bit weird. There's no bay leaf in the curried butternut squash soup either. I wonder what would happen if we put one in. <laughs> <laughs> I am really thrilled with what we made today. Like Absolutely. so many bright colors and, mm -hmm. and then it's healthy because you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just new here with us, welcome and we're glad to have you. But we Hit do have a little subscribe button if you're new. <laughs> we have an ongoing, uh, kind of a running joke for the yeah. last 10 years. If we make a freezer meal and, and it's got lots of color in it, Charlotte will be like, look at it. She'll like, it's a baby. Look at it. It's so pretty. Look at all the colors. You know what that means? It's healthier. <laughs> it's and, it's, and it's true. She does it and she's not wrong. So in, enjoy your colorful meals. They are delicious. And um, so join us in our Freezer Meals 101 Club if you're looking for more easy freezer meal recipes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a video right there with some other vegetarian freezer meals because if that's what you're looking for, we have got quite a few videos already and we're planning another one. So be sure to click down below and join our Freezer Meals 101 Club and come and find us on Facebook because we have a really nice community here. And if you've made some of these meals, let us know how they go. Drop us a comment below and we'd love to see how it's worked out for you. Happy cooking. Bye.